So this video, number three, we're going to add a folio on the master page spread. Now folio is just a fancy word for anything that we kind of see at um, the bottom or the top or kind of within that um, that section kind of outside of the grid. And they can, it can really be a, a variety of things. Most often there are page numbers. So this number 50 is responding to the page number um, and it will actually coincide with um, in the pages panel um, and you can see there's 48 if I zoom in there's page 48 and there's page 52 and then I also have on these folios I have some page information so I have the publication date and then I have the name of the magazine so these things this folio is actually created in the master page now the reason why we put these in the master pages as opposed to kind of doing them by hand or manually in the actual pages is remember I said that anything that we create in the master page is going to be locked and it's going to be automatically generated when we, um, you know, so if I add some more pages, you're going to see that that automatic page number is, um, is apparent and becomes um, just kind of automatically is generated. If I delete them, those pages go away, that page number goes away. So this is something that we do in the master. We don't do it by hand manually in the actual pages. Um, another way to look at it is like, um, you know, you would never have, most people don't have the eye and the diligence and the uh, uh, the ability to work uh, that well <laughs> with page numbers. And we often pages, you know, for instance, they get shifted around and we have to kind of accommodate, you know, uh, you know, you would never, you know, this is page 51. Well, what if it gets changed to page 52, 53? So we need to, um, we, we don't ever do any, if I switch it back, that automatically, um, that folio changes to page 51. So we never ever do page numbers by hand because we do not trust ourselves. We make sure that InDesign is automatically generating them by adding them into the, um, the document uh, master page um, because it's just um, very much safer to do it that way and uh, it doesn't take, uh, human error is less likely to become an issue. So we're gonna do this in the master pages. So make sure you have master page selected and then what we're going to do is we're going to actually add some layers right off the bat because I want um, the master things that we're going to do in the master pages um, to have their own separate layer. Um, um, and it's going to just make our workability and our production run a bit smoother. So um, in the master, to have the master pages selected and then go into your layers window and we're going to, we can make one of these, this one kind of, we can make it, um, the text layer, um, text, oops, I didn't select that. I didn't um, paste that right. And then we're going to make another one and we're gonna call this master items. So just double click on that and then get the images. Now, if you don't um, double click, you can also alternatively go right click and you can go layer options and a pop-up will appear. The little panel window um, hamburger will also allow you to do that. So layer options will bring that pop-up here and we can just paste that word in there. Now, I do want you to have them in this particular order, meaning text and then master pages and images um, um, on top of each other so the reverse of this basically so in order to do that I'm just going to click hold and drag and just drag these up now this order is just based upon how we made them so um, I want them to be um, the reverse of that so so the text and then the master items and the images are images on the bottom and the reason we're going to do that is because um, uh, you'll see here that um, Images, this is an image and that is on the bottom and then these, this is the master items and that sits above it and then text is always going to sit above that as well. Okay, so back to our pages window. We still have the master selected and we're going to start adding those folios. So at the bottom of the page, we're going to draw a text box from the outside to the inside margin. I'm going to do that right now. So this, go um, control zero to zoom all the way out so we can see both of those spreads. Again, make sure you're in the master pages. So I'm going to zoom in, just use this little zoom tool here. So to the bottom, it's going to actually, just to get this a tiny bit out of the way, do that. 
um, I'm going to draw a text box. Now, I want to have my folio, just like this one, below the margin, that purple line. If I have it on the margin, I, I, I want to keep all the content within the margins. So I want to actually draw a text box below that margin from outside to inside. And so it kind of the folio is now going to sit below that margin and not interfere with the content we have within that grid. So I'm going to do a special thing called insert special character. This is going to maybe blow your mind a little bit. It's a very fun little thing that InDesign will do, uh, allow us as a do to automatically generate page numbers. So in your type window, you're going to insert special character and it's going to be markers. And this one is going to called current page number. Again, type, we'll have your text box selected. Type, insert special characters, markers, current page number. When I do that, I don't get a number, I get a letter A. That is coinciding with the name of the master. Now, if I had a different master, say just for argument's sake, I called this one, and then I called this, um, you know, uh, feature article. You'll notice that it changes to one. So this is just, this name is just, this um, current page number is coinciding with the name of the master. It is not actually the page number. I'm gonna change this back to A actually because um, I don't want that number, that to be a number confuse me. That would actually totally confuse me. So I'm gonna change that back to A and that you'll see that then changes back to the letter A. Now we do wanna add um, a couple other things that, um, like I have in this other one, where we have this um, can science break the plastic addiction and then the date of the article or the date of the publication. So we're gonna do some fun things here. It's kind of some tricky things. Um, we're gonna add a thing called M space. Now, often, um, amateur or students what they'll do in order to create a bit of space between say, you know, the characters, they'll just press the space bar. Now, if we do that, what that doing is kind of adding space depending on the size of the font that we're using. And that is actually not a very kind of professional way of doing that. Um, I want to add a space called an M space. An M space is based upon the letter M in any given alphabet and that kind of space that um, it's kind of consistent. And actually, just so we have everything kind of, we can see everything, let's go type and show hidden characters so you can start seeing. So if I have, I zoom in a little bit, you can see that that's a character space. And then if I had, say, a tab, oh, don't get rid of that. If I say had a tab, you'll see that double chevron. Um, but it, uh, oh, control Z. Um, an M space is gonna look like this. So type, insert special, or sorry, insert white space, M space. And so you'll do that and you get actually this like a little almost like long extra long hyphen that in the dot below it that is an m space there are lots of different um white spaces we can add an n is a slightly narrow one you can see the difference between oh i'll do that again so you can see there's an m long dash or long space bigger space and then an n is um that little much smaller one now um as opposed to like a hyphen, right? Hyphens are um, to be used as hyphenations between words. M and Ns are actually more type like um, professional ways of um, adding um, uh, kind of spaces between the characters. So I'm just gonna add that M space again, um, ob sorry, type, insert white character, white space, M. And then we're going to add the name of the magazine article. So you can just copy and paste this and we're going to just paste it. And now it's Minion Pro, we're not gonna worry about the, um, the, um, the font quite yet. Now, we're gonna do this funny thing that's kind of cool. We're gonna do a shift tab. I'm just gonna zoom out a tiny bit so you can see this in action. So instead of um, going space, 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 I, I wanna add some text here at the very edge of this frame. So instead of going space, 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 and just kind of willy-nilly adding some the next text, I'm gonna do something called um, shift tab and when I hit shift tab it's you'll see that that again shift tab that that cursor automatically bumps all the way over to the end of that um, that that text frame 
And then I'm going to add, oh, I should have made that red so you could see it. I'm going to make that, there is now that February 2022. And if you want, you can change that to March since I made this originally in um, March, February, but now it's March. Okay, so um, next we want to mirror this on the right side page. Now, if we just copy and paste this, so I'm just going to select it and then copy and paste it, and then we can oh, copy and then paste. Where did it go? And I can kind of just align it here, and I can use my line tool if I want to do that. That is a kind of a, you know, not a very safe way as well to do that. If I want to do this very um, so that these are exactly mirrors of each other, and because we've added this M space and we've done this shift tab, it's going to be a little bit, a tiny bit tricky, um, but we're going to do it. I'll show you step by step. So instead of just doing a copy and then a paste and that, um, that pasted object just kind of goes wherever it wants to go, we're actually going to use the hotkey called um, uh, command. Oops, and then when I, oh, is that the right one? No, sorry, I'm sorry, option. Um, and then it's Alt on the PC. Now you see when I do that, it automatically generates or automatically copies and pastes a, um, a duplicate. Um, now, again, I don't wanna just put it anywhere. I wanna copy and paste it, oh, just kind of right next to each other. So I'm actually gonna hold down, make sure I've done this right, yeah. Hold down the Shift key. So I'm holding down Alt, Shift, oops. Don't move that too much. And then when I copy and paste it, um, if I'm holding down the shift key, it's going to keep it in alignment. So again, um, alt or command or alt or option on the PC and Mac, and then holding down the shift key, that is going to um, keep it in alignment. Zoom in a little bit. Now we want this to be mirrored. So we just have to kind of just move things around a bit and it's going to be a tiny bit. So for instance, I want this, that A to now go here. And then I want um, that M space to now go here. And I want this plastic to go right here. And then if I hold down, hopefully I can do this. I can go still do that shift tab Nope, I didn't do that right. If I did this, oh, I have to get rid of that, sorry. Um, now if I go shift tab, let's see what happens. Nope, <laughs> that did not work. <laughs> um, oh, shift tab, I'm sorry, I didn't press the right one. So, um, let me, sorry, I did that I did that slightly wrong. So I'm just gonna actually um, delete all of that extra space here. And now everything is right butt up to get together, it's fine. So if I just hit the, put my cursor right here on the left and go shift tab, nope. I did that again wrong. Sorry, I meant to do in between those two March and that can science break it plastic. If I go shift tab, now that's going to bump it all the way to the right side of the page. So again, put to that, I'll just go back and kind of do that all again because I kind of did that in a way that's a bit, maybe a bit confusing. So just going to now, that is just the copy and pasted um, exactly the same thing as over here and I'm just going to get that that's the current page number I'm going to um, cut that I'm going to paste it over here I'm going to cut this you know if you want to do the cut here you can do it that way um, the control or the command x I'm just doing command control x and putting that there and then I'm also going to add that m space cut it and oops paste it and then just delete all this extra space, but then put my cursor, um, shift tab, and that will bump it all the way over. Um, and then we're going to change the font. So I have it, um, you can change it to anything but Minion Pro, just get this all selected. All right, alternatively, I can start doing that if I want. So I know that's done. Um, so, so I'm going to make it anything but Minion Pro. Um, and so you can decide what font you want it to be. I'm just gonna change one of them so you can kind of see how that's happening. I'm just gonna get my character window here. I can do it up in my control. And I'm just gonna select all this and make it anything but Minion Pro. I'm kind of partial to the Avenir font these days um, just because, I don't know, just M. I'm gonna make this black. Now, if you wanna make some of the separate or different um, fonts, that's totally fine. Um, I'm just gonna make it small because um, it's just a little 
little thing at the bottom, so I'm going to make it eight point. And then I don't need to worry about letting because it's just one single line. And then we're going to make a paragraph style out of this. We've done the paragraph styles in the brochure exercise already, so I will take you through it again. Paragraph styles, if you do not have this window open, make sure you have styles and paragraph styles, or better yet, just have your typography um, workspace selected. So I'm, this is the way I do it. If you do it slightly different, you can either click on the create new style, or the hamburger, I preferred the hamburger. And when I create new style, I'm gonna be calling this folio. And we do not have to do anything here except make sure the apply style to selection is checked. Otherwise, we're gonna to have to apply it after and it's that extra step and it's annoying to do that. Um, so we're actually gonna create um, this rule. So if I just go back for a second, you can see what that is. You can see that I have this rule here, this rule, that's actually not a line, that's a rule, meaning like a rule above or below, just like a ruler is, like you would draw with a ruler. So we're gonna create that in our style. So I'll just go back here and go folio, make sure that apply style to selection is selected. And then we're gonna create that rule, it's a paragraph rule. And this is actually a rule above, but we need to turn it on. So if I have preview selected, you can kind of see that. Now it's, um, it's um, not quite what we need. So we're gonna do the rule above and the rule on. We're going to make it slightly um, less um, intense. So make it half a point. We're gonna offset it. So if I start clicking on this offset, you can kind of see that that rule is going to start bumping or moving up. Now we wanna make this nine point. So using those points again, and so it just kind of sits um, above it a little bit. You know, you can play with how much you want this offset. Obviously, we don't want it to kind of go into the margins. So if you want it just, you know, a little bit less or a little bit more, that's fine. I'm going to use nine point. And then, yeah, apply. I mean, you can make it a color if you want. Um, I don't have any swatches set up yet. Um, I'm just going to keep it the text color for now. But you can play with that once you have that. Um, um, you have some colors or some swatches if you want. So as long as you have that apply style to selection, you've named it folio and you have that rule above selected and you've manipulated it and you have it offset a little bit. As soon as you press okay, and then that, uh, that style is applied within our um, paragraph style to that actual folio. And then as soon as I check um, or select any of the text. Just put the cursor anywhere within that paragraph and click that style that I've um, made. It will automatically um, apply that style. The uh, so last thing we want to do in this video is just save it and then we'll go into the next video where we're going to set up the wireframe. So just save please.